philosophically, you're like, how can you just exclude a whole set of techniques that are highly efficient? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Bulletproof for BJJ podcast. Should there be heel hooks in the gi? Why do I say this? Most recent, 2024 IBJJF Worlds controversy. There was a disqualification of Tynan Dalpra against Francisco Lemos. Now, it wasn't, it didn't look intentional to me. It f- took a dive. He took it to high. He didn't, he didn't want that Tynan the smoke. The high board. Because he, 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 he had the, the eye poke. Yeah. Moments before. And he was like, oh, like on the ground rolling around like Premier League. And then. Um, well, Joe, you, you have experience in soccer. Tell me. I f- love soccer. <laughs> I love soccer. I played soccer all my life. But one of the greatest disappointments to me is this culture of taking a dive. I just, it's, it's awful. It's weak. Oh, it's so weak. But you know what's really interesting? You don't see that at club level soccer. No. You go to the, your local park on the weekend and rough. watch all age, like any division football. And it is rough as f- like I've never had worse injuries than I've had playing <laughs> Studs men's up. all age soccer. Yeah, you're just getting chopped. Vinnie Jones grabbing the ball. <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> boom, double like Cantona into the side of your knee. But so the um, with jujitsu, uh, sorry, and for some reason when you get to the elite level, it's actually like a technique of the game. Yeah, you know, it's this, it's this, it's this art, and you're like, it's so. F-. So anyway, I'm watching. I'm like, all right, I'll watch a couple of game matches. Got the flow grappling going yeah. on. And then I'm like, oh, Tynan, love Tynan. Yeah, yeah, and then like, oh, f- Tynan poked the guy in the eye. Wow, the guy seems really upset. The guy's rolling around, clutching his eye, probably the other eye. Like, ju- <laughs> you know, just like, oh, <laughs> five minutes later, they get going again. And then Tynan throws in a De La Hiva hook. But he had that, he had yeah, the underhook. He right? goes underhooks, underhooks the leg. And, I, I, you know, you, you don't know what's going on exactly in the moment, but it just, it didn't look like he had like put the power into it yet. And then the guy's like, Duh! and... We've seen people get injured. Mm. It's not usually like writhing around on the ground, convulsing from the involuntary muscle no. spasms. And no. And also, if you've ever... And you may have had this experience where you have a ligament in your knee pop. It's the world's. When you're fighting, even if it's not the world, you're just fighting. Me fighting Joe. If Joe popped my knee and he's trying to sweep me, I would continue to fight to yeah. not get swept. Yeah. It'll I wouldn't grow be back. Like, I wouldn't be like, oh, oh no, stop us up. Man, like, or, or you're like, wait, you're like, stop, I can't beat you. It's just, it's not often that you're like writhing around in pain. Yeah. Throwing the hands that's, up in the air. That's the football thing. So this brings me to- Probably got a good touch on him. <laughs> Love to see him <laughs> juggle the ball. <laughs> He's fantastic. But uh, no, I think so, soccer slash football skills to the side, it, it was brought up that uh, I had a, a message with a few people who were at Worlds and they were like, they should allow heel hooks in the gate. Like this, the, not that that was Tynan's intention, but there, there's nothing about what he was trying to do was trying to injure his opponent and therefore he's disqualified. That's, that's kind of te- a terrible look for the game. And I think... Yeah, it's not good for f***ing gay jiu-jitsu. Those three people I spoke to, they're all... Th- the three of them are black belt high-level competitors and they were just like... It re- like, it was controversial. It spoiled the vibe. Oh, uh, really? Like people were... That's f- because everyone was excited to see Tynan. Yeah, and people wanted to see Tynan versus... Um, Mika? Yeah, uh, no, no, no. no. Uh, J- Jansen Gomez. Uh, yep. And Jansen was on one, dude. He was doing amazing. He was ripping up. He ended up with two silver medals. Spoiler alert. Sorry. He um, he lost... This is coming medal. out six weeks from now. People are like, <laughs> yeah, sorry, there's no spoiling well there, bro. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but that's the thing, man. It, if heel hooks were allowed in the gi, would that make it more exciting? Because what they were saying to me is they'd be like worm guard wouldn't matter because you could outside heel hook. Mm-hmm. You know, it would push the action. People just wouldn't leave their legs hanging out. Could, you know, and, and you know, this has been brought up before, but really no gi jiu-jitsu has evolved so much and continues to evolve is the current rule set holding Gi Jiu-Jitsu back somewhat? I mean, there's still some very exciting matches. Don't get me wrong. Like, Is there? No, no, no. There were. There were. Like, I, I love watching Mika in the Gi. You know. yeah. and, and, and Mika was, and this is the other thing that came out, was possibly one of the only, not the only, but of all the favorites or the people who were favored to do well in their category, there was a lot of first and second round losses. Like we didn't see... 
Fabrizio Andre on the podium. Wait, let's go there in a sec. Sorry, yes. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want the best gear for BJJ, you need to go to parryathletics.com. These are our guys. They support the show. George, great guy, great creator, awesome colors, awesome styles, and also the best fit. It feels great. And that's the thing. It's not just that it looks good, it feels good. And the thing that for me I love the most is I can wear the stuff at jiu-jitsu, but then also they've got that, that other side, the cool side, where you can wear it off the mats. And they are our exclusive partner in apparel. If you want to get bulletproof gear, you've got to go to parryathletics.com. And when you buy anything at checkout, enter bulletproof20 for 20% off. Oh, yeah. So on this heel hook in the gi piece, yes. the, the, one of the common pushbacks has always been like, it's just too dangerous because there's, because like, you know, imagine you put someone in a saddle in the gi. Mm. It, there's just so much friction with the pants and stuff. Yeah. Like it's almost impossible to get out, right? Um, so, yes. so of course, like if you end up in that position, this can be pretty hard to defend the heel hook. Um, but it's like, well, should that just be the thing? It like, would cha- It would change the game. It would change the game, You would right? have to fight much harder to not end up in an entanglement. Yeah. And you just defend, like anything in jiu-jitsu, right? The defences evolve. Yeah. yeah. It, it would, I believe, personally, it would push the game to evolve, evolve because people wouldn't leave their legs in certain positions and hang out there. Like, people wouldn't go to 50-50 and just kind of leave their leg there only with the fear of a knee bar. And don't get me wrong, knee bars can be devastating. No f- knee bars. Yeah, look, I, I'm for it. I um, I mean, you know, I'm like, you know, if I think about competing, I'm like, Oof. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I'm for it. But, uh, but those days <laughs> are mostly sidelines. behind me, guys. Yeah, for, for, as a spectator, shit, show me that knee destruction. <laughs> no, I think it's, a, you know, I, I, I guess like philosophically, you're like, how can you just exclude a whole set of techniques that are highly efficient? Yeah. Like, it just seems odd. So, I'm like, yeah, put it in, bro. I, I think my, my – the reason why I wanted to bring this up is these three people are staunch IBJJF gi players. Like, one of them does a bunch of no gi. And I was just chatting them like, yo, what's going on with Worlds? How's the vibe? And if someone in this situation, someone like Tynan, who is – was an undisputed kind of favourite. And obviously Jansen had beaten him the year before. But you, you want to see that, right? Imagine if Bushesha got disqualified, you know, s- second round. It, and everyone knows that Bushesha is nine-time world champion. Or, you know, say so you, you're there for certain matches and spectacles. But obviously the excitement of Jiu-Jitsu is anything can happen. But this was, this is a little bit outside the control. He wasn't doing anything illegal intentionally. Um, it, was it, an, it was a knee reap, right? No, no. He, he had the outside leg position. But they're saying that the function, because he was going to Delaheva. Come, come in from the outside and put the leg over the top? No, he had the underhook. He had the underhook. Uh, they're saying that it, it functioned as a heel hook. All oh, right. Anyway, to the side, semantics. All I wanted to say is, could something that is currently illegal make jiu-jitsu better by being in the rule set and force people to change the way they do jiu-jitsu? Yeah, I'd like to see it. Yeah. But, so, some favourites didn't make the podium. That was another big one, right? So, yeah. obviously, Tynan. Uh, yeah, Fabrizio Andre. I was like, I'm going through this list of flow grappling videos and I'm noticing really long names. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm just looking for a name that I know. <laughs> and then I'm like, Fabrizio Andre, that's my guy, Hokaji, let's go. And uh, he does the big stomp, stomp thing. I'm like, yes, it's on. It's like when Poetan shoots the arrow. The arrow, you're like, Yes. And, uh, and then it just turned into a classic gi jiu-jitsu match, just like tie-ups, you know, like a lot of spider. I think there was, I think I saw some like worm in there. Yeah. And it was just like, oh, the, 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 the guy that beat him was, you know, tied him up, was really good at slowing him down, swept him and shit. Yeah. But you're like, ah, oh, f- That's not what I came for. Yeah, I wanted to see the Fabrizio athleticism. Yeah. Or maybe, maybe your, your no-gi expectations. <laughs> you know, there, there were moments in the match where there, you know, even Fabrizio where he's like in the guy's guard and whatever and it's like 0-0 zero, zero or 2-2, two, two, whatever. And, you know, they're both like looking over at the scoreboard. Yeah. And, and the clock. And you're like, dang. I don't know. It just that is a characteristic of gi jiu-jitsu. This like, yeah. oh, where are we at? Like strategically, how, how much should I stall? When do I need to go? And I'm like... 
I really just like that side of it. Yeah, but I guess it's just because advantages, right? Like you can win on an advantage or even matches decided on decision where there is actually no clear winner other than the refs being like, who do we think pushed it? Yeah. And it, that's not even clear. Do you find you get thirsty at training? I do. I do all the time. I'm a sweaty human and I need to hydrate. Now, the biggest problem is by the time you're thirsty, it's a little bit late. You need to hydrate. And that's why we got Sodi. Sodi is sponsoring the show. We've got all the colors of the rainbow. Great flavors here. We've got salty citrus, salty pineapple, salty berry, and my favorite, salty grapefruit. And they will be releasing two new mystery flavors soon. So why do we need this? It's going to prevent our muscle cramps. It's going to help our energy delivery. And it's also going to mean you're less tired, which is an advantage when you're training. If you want to maximize your jiu-jitsu and feel good when you're rolling, you need to get Sodi. And when you purchase, enter the code BULLETPROOF20 at checkout for 20% off. Oh, yeah. Like, for example, uh, at least in certain fight promotions, like uh, whether it be a UFC or something, like dominance or damage ca counts for something. Yeah. And so, like, you know, even going like, all right, who got after it? That would be great. You know what would be sick? What's that? If we could have like, um, we'll have it soon enough, like... Um, like say, I, I'm guessing like some kind of MRI type cameras that can be looking at the different athletes' connective tissue as the match goes on. And so you can actually measure, oh shit, 60% tear of the ACL. Holy shit, uh, like chondroidal tear of the meniscus cartilage. <laughs> like, you know, like how good would that be? So it's like they both finish the match. It's like, oh, this can here, like he's damaged. Yeah, like that would be the sickest. But uh, okay, blood like, flow restriction. Like, <laughs> oh my god, his brain was without oxygen for like a clear seven seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, but I guess here's the thing: how many people have eaten damage to win? Oh All yeah, right. you know yeah. what I mean. Like, yeah, blow my ankle out. I'm gonna take your back. Yeah, but no, that would be an interesting rule set. Like, Sick. wins decided on damage. Yeah. Whoa. But um. So who else? Who else did? And we, we didn't. Well, Kennedy, Ka Kennedy, Marcel, Cobrini's son, also not there. Cole Abate, not. Not not on the pony. Holy but shit, Cole, okay. Yeah, so there was like uh, uh, Tallison. I think he lost second round. Wow. Like there were many people. And the great thing about it is it opens the podium up, right? So you've got more people up there. And don't get me wrong, there were plenty of favorites in the women's category and, and so, some of the men who did exceptionally well, right? Like no question. I guess for me, my, my thinking was, I mean, I was looking at Jansen Gomez because he went in the absolute. And he ended up getting silver. He got knee barred in the final. Wow! Actually, he's quite but he's quite light. He's a he's a he's a medium heavy guy. Okay, but he I mean he came in looking stacked, and he beat uh, Gutenberg uh, Ferreira Pejera Pejera. Sorry, in um, I think the second round. Oh wow! Yeah, he was he was going mental. Yeah, right. Look great. And Gutenberg beat me. Yeah. Amazing. It's amazing how yeah. you, then maybe we should organize a super fight between <laughs> you and Jansen Gomez to decide who, who actually is better at jiu-jitsu. Yeah, I, I mean, the fans want to see it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but so, so okay, so here's the thing. So, okay, so who are we saying? So of the kind of favorites, males, top of the head, and, I'm, and I apologize to the female division because I, I didn't, I watched like a few matches and they're all in the dudes, all dudes categories and I don't know most of the athletes there, but so we're saying Tynan... Fabrizio, Andre, Talison, Suarez, Cole, like four clear favorites there or people you'd expect to do well, very well. Well, people who'd won, the only person out of like the, who had won major like gold medals at all the other major tournaments was Mika Galvan and he won lightweight. So are we seeing that these athletes who have recently been, I would say, you would assume putting their emphasis into no gi, yep. are we seeing a decline in their gi performance? Potentially, yes. Like, don't, I mean, here's the thing. So, And it makes sense. You would expect to. However, we haven't really seen it yet. A lot of those guys have still been super competitive both uh, at the gi as well as no gi. Yeah, I mean, so Eric Muniz won the absolute. And he's done that a bunch. He's a heavyweight guy. He's a big, big monster of a human. And so well, fifth, fifth world championship, he's won the absolute a bunch. I'm just trying to have a look uh, for Gabriel Patos. I mean, the women's category, the women who have dominated before dominated again, right? right. But yeah, I think, I mean, we all knew it. Gi goes one way, no gi goes the other way. Even though there have been many crossover athletes in the past, 
Do you need the best inside information on Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? I have the answer for you. It is Tap, Nap and Snap, the Jiu-Jitsu newsletter. We have partnered with them to help you guys connect to the latest happenings, drama, gossips and goings on in the BJJ world. We even have our own little section dedicated to helping you move better for BJJ. So if you're interested to find out more, click the link below and get connected with Tap, Nap and Snap, the BJJ newsletter. That right now, the, uh, there's a bunch of athletes. Uh, like, for example, Levi wasn't at Worlds, right? Yeah. He's focused on ADCC. Yeah. You know? Marangali, Ad- same deal. Adele. She wasn't, you know, yep. she, she got a pro f- um, fee on. Yeah, you, you have to prioritize, right? Because it's not, the game is advanced enough that you have to choose. Mm. And so, yeah, I think there's something very relevant to what you're saying. Ah, to that, we got to mention um, Adam Wozinski. He was the first European to oh. win the yeah to win right yeah. to win worlds I think yeah and or wait no that's wrong because his film won worlds I maybe should, yeah, yeah, she first has. European male yes to win the the heavyweight division or something yeah. that's it yeah that's pretty f-ing sick yeah and I mean he's been at it such a long time yeah he's been European champion maybe two or three times like he typically comes up against uh, he nearly always faces fights the same guy in the final from Alliance San Diego. Um, his name escapes me now. I apologize, but um, yeah, man, he he was a champion ten years ago. Yeah, he was like the advocate of the half guard and butterfly guard then. And everyone's like, oh, his game's so old school. He still hits it on everybody. Yeah, I was watching him with his butterfly sweep. It's like the dude knows. The dude's like, Fuck, I'm I'm halfway <laughs> through the butterfly sweep, and they're just like stalled there, and then he sweep. Yeah, it's unstoppable. So. Man, I, I feel what is great about this most recent IBJJF world is I think it informs where jiu-jitsu could go next, potentially. In the same way, uh, the popularity of heel hooks in Nogi forced uh, the IBJJF to bring them in, in brown and black belt and uh, in the Nogi, right? Yeah. Could all the popularity of what is going on and the excitement around Nogi grappling force jiu-jitsu to evolve i'd like to see that happen man i want to stay a fan yeah well it's hard but i want to yeah the stalling the stalling kills us all here it is folks we uh every week we get our heads together we chat we plan we plot we scour the internet for semi-relevant information bits and doodads of in, uh, <laughs> entertainment you might say to keep you all pleased and we do this because we love to chat but also connect with you and it would be a massive favor to us if you would like and subscribe it's a huge thing for us but maybe a small thing for you just take a couple seconds click click and if you're listening to this on an audio platform just hit that five stars baby we appreciate it